is the port system. This is one of the computerized system. Now it means to plug all these, all the technology, tools, and now different type of the model. Now all these now is plugged together, and then after now it's one of the digital port system. Under this head, now I have taken example is one of the Apple Fruit Club. Now Apple is one of the most important fruit club, especially for the hilly areas, and uh, it is a uh, uh, grown in uh, Jammu Kashmir, Manchal Pradesh, then after uh, Uttarakhand, and some of the part of the Arunachal uh, Pradesh. Here you can see. The, this is the framework for the implementation of the ITM program. In ITM program, in decision support system, now three heads are there. One is the strategic decision, second is the continuous monitoring, and third is the decision. All these decisions now mixed together, and after now it's developed one of the operational decision. In operational decision is one of the most important thing, and these operational decision now it's provide the information directly to the farmers. So that now this is the one of the framework of the IPM program. Under this head now one of the taxes decision now having two aspects. One is the plant production practices and second is the performing non-technical methods. So that now it will be decided that now here under this head now consider under the organic uh, uh, material and then after in case of plant production practices now all these chemical now, uh, now consider under this head. So that now all these tactics now mixed together and then after now it's for one of the um, framework of the implementation of IPM program. Under this head, we are now three operational head, te technical head and strategic. Now strategic now is covered the most of the areas so that now and now operational heads now is the, within the crop and tactics now in the crop period. So these all these aspects now which cover by the owner, director, manager, and client. All these uh, persons now uh, involved in this head regarding the strategic decision, tactical decision, and operational decisions. You can see here the implementation of the IPM now requires more knowledge. This one is the uh, knowledge for the plant production practices properties and application. All these information which are more important if you're going to develop any decision support system so that now knowledge is one of the most important things. Second is the complexity, multiple criteria for local condition and cost benefit analysis. So uh, complexity now generally involves the greater complexity than the implementation of the conventional agricultural system. So two things, one is the knowledge and complexity, which are more important if you're going to uh, develop any decision support system for the crops. Under this head, now this is the chain of the decision support system. Now first, this initially we start from the identity, uh, identification of the problem, then analyze the problem, develop and evaluate the solutions, then select the best solution, convert decision into action, and then now last is the follow aspect. So this is the one of the chain of decision support system. Decision support systems now which follow nowadays in most of the field area, uh, area like agriculture, natural resource management, environmental study, health sector, and business. So now I'm talking about the agriculture system, uh, system PSS in agriculture systems. The four important part of the decision support system, one is the database management system, and knowledge base is two most important things. Then now user interface, and now last is the users. So now four head which are generally involved in decision support system. In case of agriculture, now one of the agronomy, soil science, plant pathology, and entomology now frequently use the decision support system for the uh, crop. In decision support systems, one is the machine learning. Machine learning which are more important nowadays now frequently used by the most of the persons and on these basis you can identify the problem. Then after the warning system is another important aspect uh, regarding the disease aspects or insect aspects. So warning is one of the another important and then on site device and overall all these now club together now it's develop a decision support systems. 
in decision support system first of all now select the data from the uh, cloud through the gps systems or uh, now having different type of the sensor suppose now you are working on the apple fruit of so different type of the sensors which are generally um, involved in this aspect and then after now collect the data and these data sent to the automated uh, pest control pest and disease models and these uh, some of the experts are there and these experts now which use these models and then after now develop uh, send the information to the panel of the expert and the panel expert also take the observation or collect the data from the through gps and now take decision and then send to the itm persons uh, guide uh, follow the guideline of for the itm and then send to the advisor with local advisor and these local advisor send information to especially the farmers so this is the actual flow chart of the decision support systems the same informations uh here in case of decision support system now one of the most important is the database and these database uh, use uh, the database now frequently use the different type of the model in database and then after now send to the export knowledge plot uh, to the export knowledge and then interpret it and then after now advise to decision making so all these information is that more important Uh, regarding the decision support system here are now four aspects which are generally involved one is the crop environment second is the data third is the knowledge and now fourth the decision so that now in case of crop environment regarding collection of the data then analysis of the data and interpretation and then after now follow up <coughs> excel so on this basis nowadays now in all over the world different type of the decision support system are there just you can see here mention the some of the examples like uh, uh, o especially used in case of the apple sky sidarus and those states sky big ag radar new or and into all these uh, decision support systems which are available on the websites and simply now one of the registration is there and now uh, having the sum of the fees now 50 dollar or 100 dollar so that now if you can pay the 50 dollar then after you can register it and now collect, uh, take the data from all over the world and on this basis you can develop the decision support system for anywhere here now mention one of the ag radar ag radar decision support system especially in case of the apple sky apple sky now the uh, pathogens which are survive on the fallen leaves on the fallen leaves and if the condition is favorable then after they form pseudothecia and these pseudothecia now mature si and esco spores these esco spores now which start infection so uh, in case of uh, decision support system this is one of the most important things if you know about the uh, pseudothecia maturation or development of si and esco spore on these basis you, uh, you can forecast and reduce uh, uh, reduce the number of this spray because if you um, if you uh, develop any ipo program or management of the apple fruit crops it's require number of the spray near about 10 to 12 spray which are generally required for the management of the uh, foliar diseases so that on these basis if you know about the warning systems or you know about the pseudothecia uh, maturation or Uh, esco issue in in formation esco spore development in the environment so that on these basis you can reduce the number of spray so ag radar and then after now one of the another um, uh, niva niva decision support systems rimpro division uh, decision support system all these Uh, uh, uh support systems which are available on the website if you any what is interested you can see the website and now all the information which are available simply now one of the uh, software technology and these technology now uh, based on the weather parameters so on these basis you can find out the uh, uh, disease uh, disease warnings or disease forecasting so uh, on this basis now we have uh, collected the data from different place of the uttarakhand hills so now one of the equipment now purchased from the austria 
and these equipment now placed in different uh, area of the Gadwal Himalayas. Six or seven place now we have selected, and then after now place these equipments. And these equipments simply collect the you know, uh, weather parameters and plus the warning systems of the actual scan. The scans which are available just below the line now totally free from the scans, especially in the Gadwal in the Uttarakhand Himalaya. And above the black line, now the scabs are there. So nowadays, now below the black line, now all area now which are free from the disease. Here you can see the life cycle of the pathogens. First of all, the pathogens which are survived here on the fallen leaf, after it goes, and then after, if the condition is suitable, then they form the pseudothesia. And these pseudothesia now mature uh, and they form SI and SP food. Here now it's required 10 to 12 degrees centigrade temperature, and after that now it's required the 18 degrees uh, temperature. Then after they form a sign and now you start the infections here. So if you know, farmer doesn't know, uh, know about the actual stage of the SI and SP score formation, and all these informations which are directly related to the weather parameter. So that if you know about the SP score formation, so here. If you use, uh, if you manage the crop through the fungicide, then automatically number of the spray will be reduced. Now these are the different phenological stage of the tree, and these phenological stage now which are frequently used regarding the spraying of the chemicals. These are the spray schedules now developed especially for the Uttarakhand Hills area. Now different type of the schedules and uh, mostly. Uh, fungicides which are frequently used for, to manage the crop. Due to this system, now we find out the primary inoculum, phenological stage, infection periods, and all these information now which club together, and then after now we start the, then develop the warning systems, especially for the apple scan. So uh, in the Garwal Himalayas. Due to this system, now we find out the infection period, degree days, mills infection period, warning period, and potential SQ score dose. Now all these informations which are more important, especially for the apple scan. Or if you are working on the apple, so that now all these information which are most important. If you predict the disease. So all especially in the Garhwal Himalaya, now he conducted different trials and then after use one of the degree days model. In degree days model, now logic, profit and degree days, now all three which are frequently used for the foreco uh, forecasting of the SQS for maturation. Then mills criteria is one of the most important things. Now mills, now he developed a one of the table and these tables which are very popular in all over the world. So nowadays, due to the weather parameter, now some of the changes are there, so that now evaluate the mills criteria, especially in the Garhwal Himalaya, and then after now last is the potential SQS score dose. So all these parameters which are used for developing forecasting models are warning systems, especially for the Garhwal Himalayas. Due to this systems, now um, if you click here, support now disease related sensors, so that now all these observations which are available here, so that uh, simply, you click here, scan SQ score infection, then now we can scan SQ score infection, all these information which are available on the, your screen. And on these basis, simply find out the SQ score maturation. So, one of the, these computerized systems, and second things now manually, we collect the uh, following leaf, and then after find out the SQ score maturation, so that now both the uh, informations now uh, are the same. So that now, I think now it will more accurate. Here, now we collect the data at degree days and then after the SQ score maturation. So that one of the sigmoid curve which are generally appears in case of most of the places, now seven to eight places now which are selected in the Uttarakhand Hills. So that near about 91% relationship which are formed. Whole Uttarakhand Hills now divided into two parts. Here you can see, now 1900 to 2200 meters above the sea level 
and then after more than 2200 meter above the sea level or 60% exposure maturation now it is required in case of 1900 to 2200 meter above the sea level now near of the 500 degree days and in case of 60% exposure maturation in case uh, in uh, more than 3200 meter above the sea level now it required near about uh, 750 uh, degree days so on this basis you can predict the esco spore maturation in the area on the degree days basis so that uh, we find out in whole uttarakhand hill hill area the degree day for 50% maturation maturation it required the these degree days and for 70% now it required this uh, uh these uh, degree days in case of mills criteria mills is one of the most important things so that in the, here you can see the primary stage development yellow dot lines for the mills table and sky blue is our data so some of the differences in our data and mills table near about two days differences which are generally found in our data and mills table on this basis now we revised the mills table and now it's published in the plant pathology is one of the reputed journals now third aspect first is the degree days second is the mills criteria and third is the potential esco spore dose now this potential esco spore dose is also one of the most important things for the forecasting of esco uh, 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 spore maturation so in this regard now it's required lichen density pseudo fissure density leaf litter density and one of the esco spore density so very simple things if you move in the orchard area then after you can select the four trees and in between the four trees you can find out all these uh, lichen density esco spore density all these information and these now club together then after you can find out the potential esco spore dose these potential esco spore dose now depend on the last year crop if you uh, spray the chemicals during the um, uh, during the harvesting of the crops are uh 5% urea 2% urea general most of the farmers which are frequently used to decomposing of the uh, fallen leaves so that on this basis the potential exposure dose is the very less and the same information now collect the data from different place of the uttarakhand hills area from 1994 to 2010 and then uh, potential exposure dose is very high in 1996 now this 1996 is the epidemic year on that time the government of uttarakh government of uttar pradesh now had taken decision to destroy all the apple fruit crop from the patwadi fruit or gangotri fruit belt area because now this is the epidemic year now second epidemic year now still uh, in 2008 so that now uh, two epidemic year now occur especially in the Uh, bhatwadi fruit belt or gangotri fruit belt is due to the scab on the basis of potential esco spore if less than 800 potential esco spore dose so that there is no uh, need to spray of the chemical if above the 800 uh, 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 potential esco spore dose so that now it's need the uh, spray the same information now broadcast through the sms service and um, radio stations or um, doordarshan now just one of the nearest radio station najibabad now all the information sent to the najibabad radio stations and now um, in local newspaper and before the starting of the news one of the slogan is there ki now harsil area mein esko spore mature hone wala hai so that now farmer can spray the chemical so this type of information now broadcasted through the radio stations or tv doordarshans and it is more popular especially for the gangotri fruit belt area and this is the last my slide now conclusion the decision support system now is the one of the most important aspect nowadays and now due to this now reduce the cost of protecting uh, their crops from pests and diseases because of the reduction of the number of treatments improve the use of the natural resources and now 
इंक्रीज द क्राफ्ट क्वालिटी एंड क्वान्टिटी थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच now jyoti mart now pauli now and now pauli pauli and now the go to put in the relationship between uh, this animation uh, yes yes take the flight to the other because yes thank you very much now organizing secretary now consider my name for the lead lecture okay thank you very much thank you स्टडीज last mm. is it sir sir man yes and the whole chairman co chairman report yes esteemed delegates dignitaries from our uh, different states uh, dear students we are here to discuss uh, this uh, palynological studies of pollen grains of some fruit crops uh this is you know there is a question that why this is needed the study of pollen it is needed for uh, the botanical information the second thing is that to identify the different taxa and a uh, different type of honey which is very important to identify the honey source from where it is the honey is collected uh the literal meaning you can see the pollen meaning sprinkle or scatter and pollen in latin it is dust so this is collected by now it is written here the phylogenetic analysis and it can also be utilized in identification of different plant identification of honey uh, paleo palynology and paleo botany this is the plant the pollen is important in pollination process and you know the various the 2 lakhs 50000 angiosperm plants are of uh, thriving well across the world and these 2 lakh 50000 plants are totally depend upon the 2 lakhs pollinators different pollinators and out of these uh, pollinators the 80% of the pollination services is rendered by different uh, insects 80% out of total and these 80% if we suppose this as 100 then 80% out of this is performed only by bees bees not includes only honey bees but other bees are there and they are rendering their services across the world for different types of crops in pollinating different crops presently 
we are cultivating 1300 crops for our food purpose and out of these 100 300 the 900 crops are cross pollinated and in these 900 cross pollinated crops the pollination is one of the very very important uh, process and you can say that out of a uh, hundred percent if you suppose that 33 percent production is contributed to these pollinators means mostly the insects are the bees bees includes 22,000 different species 22,000 they are thriving across the world in different states in different country and silently they are providing their services to fulfill the uh, food grain requirement and and that is why these pollen grains if mainly we divide or we uh, go to the purpose why there is a need of study of these pollen grains so two purposes are there one is that to fulfill the requirement or to for a rearing of bees, honeybees. And second one is we can use as our food, human food. And this is one of the very, very important human food, or you can say it is a apicultural product. We will discuss it later. What are the different apicultural products which are of have prime importance? Why this uh, Pollen is chief source of protein for bees, as well as for us. We can take as a uh, nutritious diet or capsules or tonics. Different uh, products of these pollens are available in the international markets. 100 milligram pollen required for optimum growth of young adult bees. One adult bees requires 100 milligram of pollen for complete growth and development of bees. 18 gram pollen is required to rear one colony for one year, one honeybee colony. And of course, we are at, uh, we are well acquainted with this information that how uh, the pollination is important for the different crops. Now you can see the apple. It is reported sometimes somewhere. It is reported 7,000 percent increase can be achieved through pollination. If proper pollination is facilitated in various crops, you see pear, cherry, strawberry, lychee, orange, 7,000 or 8,000 times increase can be enhanced in various crops, fruit uh, trees especially. But in crops, various like uh, this uh, uh, mustard or other crops, which are depend upon the cross pollination, we can increase up to average 30% to 35% increase can be achieved in different crops by facilitating only pollination and this is and that is why this pollination or uh, beekeeping is important because land is dwindling day by day there is no scope to increase the productivity almost we are on the culmination of the production highest level so this is only way if, if we are facilitating the pollination in various crops and prop, proper pollination is facilitated then we can increase 20 30 percent or 40 percent in average in different crops. These are the other crops in which uh, these are the different products of uh, beekeeping. Briefly, we might be aware because if we are talking about the beekeeping, generally this is the general perception that beekeeping means uh, honey production. But it is not true. In many of the country, you will find the honey is the secondary product or byproduct of beekeeping. The primary product is like the bee wax, pollen, or the royal jelly production. You can see here the propolis is another important and anti-carcinogenic uh, anti effect is there. It is already proven that make this I'm telling here. This is bee venom, which is poison. Uh, if we are collecting the poison, its price is one lakh rupees per kg uh, in international markets. This is pollen, which can be formulated. Uh, in different commercial uh, packing we can make and uh, we can sell it. This is royal anti aging product, which is magical product of beekeeping. And this will delay the process of aging process in human being too. 
it is given to one queen one member of uh, that uh, colony honey bee queen so its life is increased you see the three years she can survive it is completely if fed one individual if same individual is fed with the pollen or other food which is given that will survive our life span will be only for uh, 42 days so this is only the food which can determine whether the individual will develop in the form of queen or in the form of worker if it is fully fed then that will survive up to 4 year 5 year and if it is partially fed then that will survive there is no genetic difference in these two individuals but this is only the difference the royal jelly which can differentiate one to survive 4 years and another to survive 42 days so that is why this is called a magical product of bee keeping an anti aging product the pollen grains the wax and different types of honey so we are not going to discuss in detail about these so these are the ideal condition for bee keeping uh, the the boxes are there and the mustard crop is there for honey production or pollen production <clears throat> briefly you can see uh, this is honey of different color this color is totally depend upon uh, the types of the flower from where it is collected honey is collected if uh, color of the flower is white then honey will be a white in color if it is darker then production honey will be a uh, darker in color so this is for general information because my topic is very confined or or restricted palynological history it is not of general interest so just i submitted a paper and the topic is given for this invited lecture which should be a broader and generalized so that is why i am including some more things so this is a uh, different uh, constituents of pollen protein lipid sterol and this is how we can collect the pollen because manually it is not possible for human being to collect from the field so bees collect the pollen uh, in one trip they can visit more than 100 or 200 flowers and they can collect 20 to 25 mg of pollen grains in one trip and that uh, this pollen trap by smart device can be purchased at 200 300 rupees cost and we can put at the intents and the all the pollens the bees will be compared to uh, go through these holes and the collected pellets in the hind leg will be left over they will be deprived of these pellets and the pollen will be collected in this tray and then in the evening we can have at 100 or 200 gram of pollen from every column individual column So for different, uh, you see the human being, uh, how we can use as uh, a detoxifier, appetizer, sports nutrition. This is available in the form of the capsule for international athletes. So, <coughs> these are the different types of uh, shapes are there, which we can study. Methodology given in brief. We have conducted experiments to just. Uh, Uh, identify the different pollens. These are the electron microscope where we have conducted the study here, and these are the different parameters which is taken to have the morphological study. Now, different uh, peer pollen is there. So, morphological information is there, and this is shape actually measured length, width, and all these things. so we have conducted we had conducted a study for uh, studied uh, 50 pollens in electron microscope and so that we can identify easily that what type of honey is collected and on that basis you know the type of honey is determined whether it is unifloral or mon monofloral or multifloral so if one type of pollen is present in honey more than 50000 pollens are present in 10 g of uh, volume of honey Then it is unifloral honey. If less than that, then multifloral honey. 
so on the basis of presence or pollen count it is decided that what type of honey is there and what is the major source from where it is collected so this is useful information i think so only we have considered here for uh, fruit crops not all the ornamental or other crops are not taken and this is morphological description of all the pollen conductor thank you fanny cook very is there Thank you, Dr. Pramod. Now, yes. sir. Sir. Yes, sir. 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 This Homa atmosphere yeah. is wonderful to fly the for improving the way. So if there is possibility, we can take it and see, and the Homa has can be put there so they will be logged. Yeah, we can conduct a study on that. The impact of Homa. Yeah. They said adverse impact maximum more centimeters than any. Yeah. We have uh, we had conducted a study in 2014. the electromagnetic impact of uh, these uh, radiations uh, over the honey bees so but we didn't find any uh, significant impact of course impact is there i cannot deny that but uh, significant impact is not there in our country of course in many of the country european country the 40 50% population of honey bees uh, yield by this electromagnetic radiation but here still we are safe from that electromagnetic radiation because this is not intensive so intensive in uh, asia in other country european country it is very severe problem and people government is trying to just uh, resolve this major issue but in our fortunately we are safe still but in years to come it would be a big problem for us वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन but we put this uh, the, the uh, pollen trap only for 2 hours 3 hours and after 15 days or 10 days we put that so that it cannot impact the brood development or the basic requirement of the colony so only given for shorter period of time yeah 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 so and the other question is the effect that in the Yeah. Is there any nutritional importance of uh, Indian honey? Is there any difference there? Oh uh, no, there is no nutritional uh, differences. Ah, uh, it is only the difference in fragrance. Fragrance is different. Taste is different. But nutritional, you know, the honey is only known how honey is prepared by mixing the enzymes of bee, saliva, or stomach material. so if it is once it is added that is honey and that will have all the property of the honey so there is no nutritional difference honey is honey yeah this nowadays is market and you have to see all types of different you see thank you thank you very much thank you thank you sir so the medicine value also changes Oh, yes of course you know one thing is that basically the honey property is there if it is honey collected by bees uh, and uh, collected by bees it is it may be from different flora but the type if you are talking about the medicinal honey so medicinal property is additional property which is added in the honey 
but all the uh, property which is uh, made by bees after mixing the saliva and enzymes and all the things that is there this medicinal honey medicinal properties additional bonus you can say that can have a different type of taste and different additional property depending upon type of flora but sometimes in the market sometimes you can see the uh, ginger honey is there or sometimes the uh, turmeric honey is there if plants is not able to produce flower and there is no flower there is no nectar then how honey is uh, uh, prepared it is not possible to connect or produce the honey from those plants where they, there is no flower so people are not aware basically about this uh, they what how honey is prepared so just they mix the essence of different uh, food material or the medicinal plants and say yeah Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, legally you are not permitted to add anything in the honey. Even essence is not permitted. So that is illegal. You cannot add anything in the honey. You can only you are permitted to reduce only the moisture. If moisture is more than twenty percent in honey. that can be reduced but you cannot add anything so different type of uh, the confusion is there a lot of confusion people are not aware about these things how honey is produced and uh, what is the basic uh, concept of honey production so a lot of things are there market but question is that we are taking the jamun so will it be useful for the dietary person or comparatively it is better a uh, jamun uh, has Uh, it's a medicinal property which is uh, better for the uh, diabetic patients so if you are taking honey other honey comparatively the jamun honey is better but you cannot say that this is safe and anyone can eat a diabetic patient can eat you cannot permit but comparatively it is better yeah thank you So we know it's very challenging. Challenges of personality in the market across under protected generation. How much time, ma'am? I have fifteen minutes. Okay. So respected chair person and co-chair person and dear friends, खुद ही सुनाना है, खुद ही सुनना है. So I shall be very brief. So even I may. Finish within fifteen, three four fifteen minutes. So basically, I wanted to share my some of the experiences that what we have worked done in protected cultivation. So basically, it is the experience sharing, and the credit goes to my students, those who have worked for their masters and PhD thesis with me in, in last twelve years. So basically, protected cultivation is a very big word. but mostly we consider as the synonym to the poly house cultivation where as if you see in our own country the total area is 2 lakh 15000 hectare and out of that 85% area is under only the plastic mulch only 5000 hectare is under the poly house cultivation so out of 2 lakh 5000 under poly house cultivation so basically today i will confine myself to the poly house cultivation only because it is not possible to cover all those things so i am leaving all other mm, technologies and even in poly house uh, we are growing fruits flowers and vegetables so mostly my experience is confined to the vegetables only so mostly it is the three vegetables tomato capsicum and cucumber that is grown and i have worked only on these three crops only so that is my limitation normally we all know the what are the benefits of the protected cultivation normally we have the notion that since we are growing the crop under the protected cultivation the pest incidence will be low and it will be very safe crop but this is a misconception because we forget that when we are we are creating a, a congenial climatic condition for the plant so side by side we are also cre creating a congenial condition for its pathogens and pests also so Our initial 
one or two years normally our crops remain relatively free from the pest or pathogen but second year onwards problem starts so once there will be entry of any pathogen or pest inside the polyhouse then it is very difficult to manage it so then really it is very difficult so basically what is important that as we all know this phrase that prevention is better than cure so mostly it is the preventive measures that is the working really working the and normally we forget this one so this is the most unfortunate part so if you want to these are the key points if you want to manage really the pest problem in the protective solution so these points should be taken into the consideration so i am not going into detail because we will discuss one by one but most important point is the greenhouse construction and design if you see in our country most of the almost 99% of the poly houses has been created through the subsidy only and whenever you are depending on the subsidy there are you have to find you have you have to comply the norms that that is created so basically it is very strict provision and in subsidy there is a fixed that you want to curtail the cost you want to increase the beneficiary so you curtail the cost and in that way what about the designing we are doing and many times we have find that these designs are promoting the pest incidence in the poly houses because we converging on many points number one is the height you see that there are different types of poly houses if you see this poly house its height is hardly 10 to 12 feet compared to this one so whenever you are going to reduce the height you are going to create a condition that is going to favor the pest and disease incidence again its ventilation its cladding material its entry point so these are the major points where we compromise so if you see here again direct entry point this is highly un un undesirable but the design is such in a particular scheme that you can't deviate so these are the certain issues that is very very important then cladding material that is again very very important mostly if you see the cladding material is polythene or laments so mostly if you are not using anti dripping the polythene material so there will be dripping and if there is a dripping its leaf away wetness will be more and it is very congenial for almost all the fungal infections so this is the again very important one again it is the again this is the most important aspect basically the nets that we are using for ventilation and mostly whatever the poly houses we have mostly it is fitted with the a mess uh, sorry the mm, net that is having the 40 mess and with 40 mess almost most of the insects can pass so if you want to check the entry of the vectors particularly the particularly like mites or thrips then it should be more than 60 mess but if you are going for the 60 mess it will cost in this the cost so mostly the poly houses are having the 40 mess but this is not sufficient to restrict the entry of the most of the insects so that is the major again issue then for whatever the benches you are going to take that is again its design that many times it is not facilitating the penetration of the sunlight and the ventilation again it is going to create a problem then next after construction and design the next important aspect is the sanitation practices and basically if you see the sanitation is the key for pest management and the poly houses so that is the most important and normally we ignore and when we say sanitation it is very big word mostly it is the preparation of the your poly house its pre plant sanitation then post plant sanitation so there are different steps so mostly even just you take one picture that i have taken common <coughs> though we say that whatever the crop residues are there it should be discarded because mostly it is the source where the pathogen survive but it is discarded just outside the poly house and just behind just it is adjacent to the net so it is again it has no meaning so like that there are many things that we are ignore and that is going to create the problem in the main then then again when you are going to discuss the pre plant sanitation it is the media preparation it is the water sanitation sanitization of the tools and equipments that we are using and most important was the transplant production 
again the, just i will share my some some of the experiences where the disease was introduced in our country through the transplants so now coming to the practical aspect there are again there are certain challenges that is continuing and there are certain new challenges that has been added so if you see the most important challenge is the management of the nematodes and the polyphosis after third year onwards it is you will hardly will find any poly house which is free from the nematodes and once it has entered inside the poly houses it is very difficult to manage so this is the number one issue from my mm, mm, thinking second one is the almost all the soil borne diseases be it a collar rot be it a root rot or it is the wilt so after the nematodes the all the fungal or bacterial soil borne pathogens are the next important aspect that we have to keep in mind then again scotinia white rot is a, again a new problem and recently i have got one picture from the and the university of agriculture and technology only two days back and it was the same problem but since it was in the early stage and they were not able to diagnose and this is the one population that is affecting more than 60 crop species not only the fruits and vegetables almost all the crops can be affected and mostly the cucumber and capsicum are the highly sensitive to this particular pathogen viruses are again very very important and there are many viruses that they are new that we have reported from here and again i just i have taken from the cucumber again you did these five types of viruses we have reported from pantagal itself and there are one, again if you see this is the again one pathogen that is the creatine pathogen and this is the one pathogen that is introduced through the seed in our country in kabi stem blight and nowadays this is the one this is the major issue either in the open field condition or in the protected condition so again it is a gift from the multinationals that we have got through the seeds then uh, this is again a virus that is the first time we have re re reported from the india with the help of ihr then this is again dr rebohan is there we re re reported two types of lota yeah, again it is a quarantine pest and it is the major issue in protected condition not in the open field so again it is very unique we reported and it was published in mm, 2018 in Indian Journal of Entomology. Uh, tomato is spotted virus again. It is a tospo virus. It is affecting. The, there is large number of cross. Mostly it is the capsicum and tomato are the major one. Besides these one, there are certain other problems are also very important. Toxicity is very very important. But with the toxicity of the nutrients and the pesticides, the normally the fertigation that we are getting, it is the toxicity that is due to the high kaka concentration of the nutrients that we are applying and almost 70 to 80 percent are the poly houses where i have seen this type of problem because we are not we still we have said though we are saying that we have e e standardized the fertigation schedule but to the my view it is we are giving the very high dosage of the nutrients and that's how it is creating the problem this is the toxicity of the one pesticide that was used in the poly house at the same dose that is recommended for the open field condition so what is important that doses for the particular condition is entirely different than the open field condition this is the you see these two the same dose was used that, that, that are recommended for the open field condition but in the portrait condition it is creating toxicity then nutrient deficiency are the also very very important because that your field is limited and you are taking very high yield and if you are not giving the nutrient, particularly the, this is again you see blossom in in rot, and this is the gene deficiency. Particularly in the tomato, it is the fruits become very hard, just like stone and very shiny, and sometimes it is departed also. And it is very common in the tomato because you are taking very high yield and you are not giving any supplementation. So these are the, again this is the one problem that I wish to work on that, but I shifted from the vegetables to another crop. So I could not work on that. That is the physiological disorder and particularly the physiological leaf rolling. That is very serious issue in tomato and normally people can consider it as a viral problem, but it is basically the physiological leaf roll. Because what is happening, if you see, if it is the viral, it is the top leaves that, that is showing the rolling, but it is only the lower leaves that is showing the lowering, uh, leaf rolling and it is the typical physiological leaf roll and there are many mm, varieties which are more prone to that one and if you are 
giving very high doses then uh, also it is there so it again it is very complex issue and nobody is working on that so this is the one aspect if you any anybody uh, are working in that field so this is a very challenging problem that we can work upon so now i'm coming to the management option so these are the options that we can work on but madam i will only discuss only two slides that i am skipping i am skipping all those things yeah what is the problem basic problem is that this is the number one we don't have the specific pesticides for protected cultivation mostly what ever pesticides are recommended for the open field condition that same you are using in the protected cultivation so there is no separate label claiming for protected person in our country so this is the basically the policy issues that has to be done just to take one example there is one pesticide that is called azoxy strobil that is very commonly used in tomato in us it can be used in open field condition but same pesticide can't be used in tomato under the protected one but there is no such rules in our country so that is the need second one that there is a frequent harvest in the protected condition and that's why you are not able to follow the waiting period so that that is again you need a safer chemical that have the waiting period of 3 to 4 days but we don't have in our hand so this is the second thing that third one that is the we don't have any specific equipment that is best suited for the protected culture so we are using the same knapsack sprayer where we have the latest technology for the mm, mm, protected condition but it is not available in our country that is again the issue second one the last one that is what i said the last point that is the lack of concern though we say that we are producing the quality produce in the poly houses but what we have observed that abuse or misuse of the pesticide maximum in poly houses as compared to the open field condition so these are the issues that is to be kept in mind when you are going to discuss and again i am not going to this again you can leave it and these are the policy issues that you have to keep in mind that that, that is my last issue that is the what i said the subsidy you are says the cost management that if you are going to give the subsidy so your designing sources should be such that it should be in favor of less pest incidence and pathogen attack this is the number one then we should have a separate label claiming for the pesticide for the protected cultivation then research priority quarantine measures that i have shown that there are many new pathogens and pest has been introduced so we have to strengthen our quarantine system and pesticide dose should be separate for the protected cultivation as compared to the open open field condition and last that is very important that is the capacity building of the workers and what is the last point madam that is my is that hardly there are only few person in the country those who are working in protected cultivation 12 years back when i started working in country hardly there in the whole country there are hardly two or three person that were working for the plant production and i shifted from protected to the another crop i don't know what is the current situation so these are the few issues that i wanted to share thank you very much if you have any query i will be happy to respond thank you very much for your presentation focusing on the challenges and priorities of protected cultivation in Good afternoon, to all of you. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity. I am going to discuss a hidden topic. Nobody is going to focus on it, but it is alarming. This is contamination of our food commodity.
we have to think again and again why the pest population is enhancing in our agro ecosystem i am focusing the crop as an agro ecosystem we should consider any crop as an agro ecosystem why day by day pest infestation is enhancing as dr r p singh told mite white fly jacid thrips aphids its population is enhancing 10 days before population of white fly is 2 per leaf and now these days it is more than 50 to combating that problem farmers are dumping lethal chemical in that particular agro ecosystem farmers are unable to manage the pest infestation this is the true reality you just go beyond the universities and laboratory you may found that farmers are unable to manage the pest population and they are only relying on the chemical but what is the real dose what is the correct dose nobody knows even scientific community have very less knowledge about the correct dose correct time of the particular chemical one technical officer came to me that sir i had sprayed imidacloprid at the dose of 5 ml per liter what would be the correct dose real dose is 0.3 ml per liter i think third situation is due to continuous dumping of the lethal chemical in the particular agro ecosystem there is contamination of our food commodity that's why there is a train is train is running from bikaner to something mumbai that name of the train is cancer express this is ground reality that now these days we can't go grow cotton without help of any chemical without help of any protected umbrella like this that's why we totally rely on the bt cotton like this so this injudicious indiscriminate dumping of the lethal chemical in the particular agro system has devastated the complete growing of the particular crop like the cotton punjab farmer can't grow cotton even in maharashtra in andhra pradesh situation is horrible this dumping of the lethal chemical resulted in the development of the insecticide resistance in this insects resurgence of the pesticides and my fourth point is elimination of pollinators and beneficial insects so all these are correlated i have compiled the data and prepare a topic for just sparking next So, although I have several slides, but although we have the several rules and regulation prevention of food adulteration act, we have several acts. The government have implemented so many acts. These are the various acts have been implemented. in our concept and uh, the residue generally we can define residue in mrl and adi values that minimum amount of the chemical that is present in particular food and uh, that is dangerous to our health these are the various parameters of the mrl adi and others so these are the mrl of different pesticides it has been prescribed by the fao and who for every chemical there is a particular mrl values is there but nobody is following it these are the various mrl of the different chemicals why reason of pesticide residue in our system in discriminate use of the chemical it is happening in our agro ecosystem it is happening in our field no observation no observance of the waiting period nobody is following the waiting period even one day before farmers just harvest the crop and sell it in the market i was in haryana i have seen that they are uh, dumping the carbofuron in the green coriander just one day before harvest waiting period of carbofuron is 62 days and one day before they are using this granular insecticide so it's happening 
and the wrong advice by the pesticide dealer it's happening in pesticide dealers generally give so many chemicals biogen and other things like that wrong disposal of the pesticide like this these are the various factors why this is enhancing day by day even even uh, farmers are using chemical in bursing in fodder crops like that they are using and uh, they are not following any waiting period so these all chemicals having the adipophilic value and directly they come in the contact of the fat so it's very alarming these are various method of testing so in this this is data that we are the pesticide uh have been reported above the mrl values these pesticides have been reported above the mrl values like this you see this these are the data in green chili coriander all the crops so residue of pesticide in uh, green vegetable in different states in rice uh, it is excessive it was above the mrl value one slide is very much alarming particularly in in spices yes it has been reported it was above the mrl value so many pesticide have been reported above the mrl values so this slide is alarming i think this slide is alarming you just check it the tomato permissible limit is Point two, and that uh, for the floor biofuels and reported pesticide is one seventy eight point eight seven ppm. In brinjal, it is MRL is point two, and uh, pesticide have been reported twenty four. So in lady's finger, it is point two and two point five. Cauliflower point zero one, two point eight five. Cabbage point zero one and ten. So. it is data reported by the time of nail pesticide 2012 so i think in this slide this is alarming slide it's happening with us also and uh, in my this is my own recommendation that is harmful for our health eating green salad is harmful for our health this is my own recommendation that's why i am not eating the green cabbage even broccoli green vegetables it's harmful particularly in the ncr and metro 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 cities like that so there are so many samples have been reported from the so many vegetable and fruit crop usually in pomegranate ah grape grape particularly dangerous uh, in perspective of the fungicide so many fungicides have been reported in grape crop this is report of iri 2010 mango 17 organophosphate have been reported from the mango in tea also and uh, in human milk has been reported time is very short that's why so in milk it has been reported and even dr mal it has been reported in in honey in honey uh, so many types of pesticide have been reported in honey meat pieces like this because of the wrong practice of the farmer you see due to this our trade is on the risk and so many our consignment have been rejected by the so many foreign countries you see united states have rejected the basmati rice uh once we have the meeting with the apida person so apida person told that our so many consignment have been rejected due to the excessive pesticides this is the data i have compiled saudi arabia banned chili from india it is same for like that so that arabian countries banned chili from india and uh, this uh, okra and other things this is the complete data of the that uh, this agricultural commodity have been contaminated with the uh pesticide and uh, it has been rejected by the countries like germany greece italy this is data i have compiled so now it is time to have some fear that ill effect of the pesticide you just see some slides and generate 
from the spark, the, these are the ill effect of the pesticide, definitely. Environmental effect, it has the biomagnification quality like that, it will enhance, uh, particularly DDT will enhance up to the 10 to power 6 times in the agro ecosystem. That's why I just I am telling that you just consider crop as an agro ecosystem. So many uh, organisms are there, a producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer like this, and all the all the organisms have the ill effect on these uh, pesticides. This is organochlorine. That's why more nahi naaste hain, chidiya nahi nikalti hai. This is the reason that we can say it has ill effect on the hatching of the eggs. So effect on the biodiversity. It has really adverse effect on the biodiversity. So now what to do? Management of pesticide. Let's do. Organic farming and now Niti Aayog have replaced the organic farming with the natural farming, I think. And uh, I'm not fully supporting the organic farming. At least we have to start from 5%. Suppose we are growing uh, tomato in one hectare area. First year, you just start 5% natural like that. Then 10%, then 20%, 30% like that. We have to initiate the conservation of our biodiversity, conservation of the agro ecosystem we have several means so organic produces and as dr moria is expertising this we have to uh, focus on the biocontrol this is one factor uh, this is my own view that aggressive marketing strategy of multinational company or chemical company is also responsible for this this all happening so aggressive marketing strategy of the chemical company, they are just uh, demoralizing the biocontrol or biopesticide market like this. They have the money. So we have to promote the bio biological control. We have to promote the biopesticides for this. And we have to train the farmer. We have to train the farmer toward the, you can say, just stick on over the MRL values waiting periods. Just follow the waiting periods particularly in fruits and vegetable, vegetable crops. We have to provide the intensive training to the farmers about the pesticide, use of pesticide, use of correct dose of pesticides. So washing and washing with the some uh, solution, uh, cold water washing like that, vinegar, vinegar solution, two gram salt and 20 ml of vinegar solution like that, it will remove the pesticides from the, uh, contact pesticides from the fruits and vegetable crop. Peeling, bleaching like that, cooking. So how to manage uh, like that? Uh, uh, we have to follow the MRN value. We have to follow the waiting periods. And uh, we have to train the farmers uh, for the use of the correct doses. These are the various centers where the pesticide residue laboratory have been established and this work is going on. And uh, uh, in future, we must develop some uh, consumer-friendly uh, devices for detecting the pesticide residue. Like that, it is a great challenge to uh, develop such kind of devices. So, conclusion, judicious use of pesticide. Yeah, we have to train farmers to the, use the correct dose of the farmer. And at the right time, particularly in vegetable crop, if uh, we just stop use of the chemical after flowering, particularly in tomato, brinjal, in this crop, we must uh, stop the use of the chemical after flowering. After flowering, we can use the neem oil or biological control agents. Really, it will reduce the pesticide residue on our table like that. So these are the various modules we have developed with zero pesticide residue like that. So in this case, initially we have used the pesticides and after flowering, we use the neem oil, pheromone trap like that for the borer. So by using this module, zero pesticide was observed over the at the time of harvesting. So we have to develop the biological control agent. We have to develop the biopesticide. We have to promote the biopesticide or biological control agent, particularly in fruits and vegetable crop. This model we have developed for the we can say zero residue uh, criteria. These are the various models for the cabbage. So these models we have used the uh, other we have used the chemical chemical with the biological control agent biopesticide and some cultural practices. These are the various models in crops. 
तो थैंक यू वेरी मच पहले डरेंगे तभी तो हम प्रमोट करेंगे I know I, these these are banned but This is IRA data. It is there. It is there. It's very difficult to have the uh, work on the HPLC and uh, this residency work is very much tedious work. Def definitely, you are true. Uh, 